Are podcasters the new journalists navigating law and ethics in digital media? When you press record on your latest podcast episode, do you think of yourself just as a creator of some kind or more as a torchbearer of truth? In today's digital age, the line between podcasting, ordinary podcasting, and journalism is a little bit blurry, more than ever, really. <clears throat> Are podcasters the unsung journalists of our time, wielding microphones instead of pens, capturing stories that shape our world? Well, today I'm diving into the heart of this question, exploring the legal battlegrounds, ethical dilemmas, and transformative stories at the intersection of podcasting and journalism. So welcome to Legit Podcast Pro. I'm Gordon Firemark, the podcast lawyer, and today's discussion might just redefine the power of your voice in the digital era. Welcome to another episode of Legit Podcast Pro. We're diving deep into the legal and business intricacies of podcasting, and today exploring a fascinating and increasingly relevant question, are podcast journalists, podcasters journalists, or more importantly, when are podcasters journalists? As the digital landscape evolves, this question has been beckoning for a nuanced discussion, especially in the eyes of law and society. Journalism has long been considered the fourth estate, right up there with the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branches of government as a crucial pillar in maintaining a democratic society by informing the public and holding those in power accountable. Now, as technology advances, the lines between traditional journalism and new media like podcasting and YouTube and those kinds of things have blurred. So I thought we'd unpack this a little bit, shall we? Well, the legal definition of a journalist usually includes criteria such as engagement in the act of investigative reporting and storytelling or intent to disseminate news to the public and adherence to journalistic ethics. But as the digital age has ushered in new platforms for dissemination of information, these criteria have been tested. Does a podcaster who investigates and reports news qualify? Well, probably. But what about the podcaster who's just interviewing guests on a particular topic or various topics or documenting an industry or a part of an industry like this podcast does? Does it come down to whether you as the podcaster think you're doing journalism or do, does it matter what outside forces think are you're doing? Are you a journalist in the eyes of the police or whatever? Good journalism is both an art and a science, and it demands a meticulous blend of ethics and rigor and storytelling. At its core, it's about informing, educating, and sometimes entertaining, but always with a commitment to truth and integrity. To practice good journalism, one has to start with rigorous research and fact-checking. That foundational step ensures that the information that is presented is accurate and reliable and comprehensive. Journalists have to go beyond surface-level details, digging deep to uncover the full story. They should consult multiple sources to verify facts and understand different perspectives and anticipate counter-arguments. This thoroughness not only bolsters the credibility of their work, but also fosters trust with their audience. And ethical considerations are also paramount in journalism. Journalists must navigate the delicate balance between reporting the truth and respecting the privacy and dignity of the individuals that are involved in the stories. This means making tough decisions about what to publish and when to withhold, always with an eye toward the potential impact on society as well as the individuals. Ethical journalists disclose conflicts of interest. They avoid sensationalism. They strive to prevent informa present information in a way that is both fair and unbiased. They recognize their power to shape public opinion and accept the responsibility that comes with it, adhere to codes of ethics like those outlined by the Society of Professional Journalists. And I should say there's a lot of different journalism organizations with their various codes out there. Um, and and there, if you're interested in the subject, it's worth a little investigation just to see what those codes all say. There's some differences that are pretty interesting. Anyway, effective storytelling is another crucial component of good journalism. A well-told story can captivate the audience, making complex issues understandable and engaging. Journalists should strive to craft narratives that resonate with the audience, use compelling characters, vivid scenes, a clear logical structure. They should aim to humanize the subjects of their stories, highlight the human element in even the most 
technical or abstract topics. This not only helps hold the audience's attention, but also fosters a kind of empathy and a deeper understanding of the issues at hand. And finally, good journalism is adaptable. It evolves with technology and audience preferences. Today's journalists have to be adept at using the digital tools for research and reporting and disseminating stories. They should embrace multimedia storytelling, leveraging text and video and audio, and interactive elements to enrich the narratives they're sharing. Social media can be a powerful tool for reaching audiences and engaging with them directly, but it also requires the journalists to be vigilant about the accuracy and reliability of the information they share. In this digital age, the principles of good journalism remain the same, but the methods of achieving it are always changing. They demand flexibility and creativity and a commitment to excellence from those who practice the field. Now, the legal framework around journalism has struggled with this question of who really is a journalist. Uh, the Federal Free Flow of Information Act, proposed at the federal level in the United States, is an aim at shielding journalists from having to reveal their sources. But it sparked a lot of debate over who qualifies for this protection. It uses terms like credentialed and bona fide or affiliated with a media organization. And that really still leaves the power to determine who's a journalist in the hands of government, maybe the police or event organizers and so on. And there's some trouble there if the government doesn't like your perspective or your approach to uh, sharing information. So that actually belies the fact that there's lots of grassroots citizen journalism happening out there. And podcasters, in many cases, are the citizens doing that journalism. So I mentioned that federal proposed uh, shield law, and if I'm being honest, it doesn't really look like that's going to be enacted anytime soon. It's been languishing in Congress for, well, several terms now, and uh, doesn't seem to be capturing the attention or imagination of the legislators much. But I wanted to explain generally what a shield law is. Shield laws in the U.S. protect the journalists from having to disclose their sources, and they can vary significantly state to state. Some states have interpreted them broadly to encompass digital journalists and podcasters, and they recognize the evolving nature of news reporting. For example, in the Crystal Cox case, um, gosh, about 10, 12 years ago now, a blogger was initially not recognized as a journalist under Oregon's shield law, and she was eventually found liable for defaming the subject of much of her reporting. And that decision prompted a number of discussions in the, in the community, legal and journalism communities, about the need for laws to adapt to digital journalism and highlight the legal system's trouble grappling with new media. And this has continued. So first off, I encourage you to check your state's uh, reporter shield law, find out what it covers and what it doesn't, and um, let your legislators know uh, about the desire for changes and expansion of that. And at the federal level, too, let your Congress critters know. Well, investigative podcasts like Serial, as an example, have demonstrated the potential for podcasting to enact real-world change, just like traditional investigative journalism. Serial delved into the complexities of a murder case and led to a new trial for the convicted person. Uh, this impact raises the question, when podcasters undertake this kind of investigative work, shouldn't they be afforded the same legal protections and recognitions as their traditional counterparts? Well, the application of journalistic ethics to podcasting presents yet another layer of complexity. I mentioned before the Society of Professional Journalists, that's the SPJ, that has a code of ethics among many. It emphasizes principles like accuracy and fairness and integrity. Now, while many podcasters do embrace these principles, the absence of a universal regulatory body or accreditation for podcasters, which is one of the things that makes this a great medium, also creates this gray area in terms of ethical accountability and professional standards. So despite these challenges, the recognition of podcasters within the journalistic community is growing. Podcasts have begun to win prestigious journalism awards, and that signals an industry acknowledgement of podcasts' contribution to the field of journalism. The recognition doesn't just elevate the status of podcasting, but it also underscores the potential for podcasts to be a part of that community, to adhere to and be celebrated for journalistic ethics and excellence. So as we look to the future, the trajectory for podcasters and journalism seems 
poised for further convergence. Legal definitions will evolve and policies will be introduced to more clearly define the status of podcasters as journalists. And I want to encourage you to be a part of that conversation and that definition. This evolution will not only validate the work that so many podcasters are doing, but also will ensure that they are protected and that they are held to the same standards as the traditional media. So let me ask you whether you think you are a journalist. As I said earlier, investigating stories is a cornerstone of impactful journalism. It requires curiosity, persistence, and ethics, a rigor in applying those ethics. Journalists embarking on an investigation start with a question or a tip that hints at a deeper story beneath the surface. From there, they delve into research, employ various methods to gather their information, and that might be public records court documents, government reports, and financial disclosures that can all reveal patterns and discrepancies or evidence of wrongdoing. Digital tools and databases have expanded the scope and speed of all this and made it much easier for journalists to uncover those connections and information that might have remained hidden in the past. And freedom of information laws can also be valuable in obtaining documents and data not publicly available, but that are crucial for public interest. Interviewing is another vital skill and tool in a journalist's investigative arsenal. Effective interviews require not just asking the right questions, but also listening carefully to the answers, what's said and what's not said. Building rapport with sources is very important, as people are more likely to share information when they trust you, and journalists often need to reach out to a wide range of sources, from those directly involved to those that are peripherally connected or really who just have an opinion, in order to piece together a comprehensive understanding of the issues at hand. Protecting the anonymity of sources who might face retribution for sharing sensitive information is a critical ethical responsibility, and that's why those shield laws are so important. The confidentiality promised in a, journalism, a journalist uh, source relationship shouldn't be something that's easily violated. Now, another set of skills that is important for journalism is data analysis and tech, right? Uh, you have to be able to uh, access data and use data mining and analysis techniques to spot those trends and anomalies and those kinds of things. That can be really powerful. And in an era where misinformation can be spread really easily and quickly, the ability to use digital forensics to verify authenticity of documents and images and videos is going to become more and more valuable. So as investigative journalism continues to evolve, these diverse methods grounded in a commitment to uncovering truth and holding the powerful to account, will have to remain guiding principles. And then there's, you know, in addition to rigorous research and effective interviewing and good use of data analysis, journalists also require heavily on collaboration and technology to enhance what they're doing. And that is becoming more and more complex in scope. So you may need a team, and that would include data analysts, legal experts, multimedia producers, and so on. This is big journalism we're talking about now. So technology plays a pivotal role as well. Tools for secure communication, encrypted messaging, those kinds of things can be important for your communication with sources. And investigative teams often use special software for data visualization, uh, as well as for presenting the information. Um, and, you know, nowadays digital platforms are... Uh, are offering new avenues for storytelling, allowing journalists to reach audiences interactively through websites and podcasts and social media and all those kinds of things. And finally, perseverance and ethical integrity are really, really integral to the investigative journalist's ethos. Uh, you know, investigations can take a long time, have lots of obstacles, legal challenges, pushback from power, uh, people in power, interests in power, and journalists have to learn how to navigate all these challenges and stick to their ethical guns, avoid those conflicts of interest, make sure what they're reporting is accurate and fair, and uh, always remember that they are here to serve the public interest um, and the mission to inform, enlighten, and affect change. Now, this brings us to a critical point in the discussion, the importance of education and advocacy in navigating the legal landscape for podcasters. And so for those who are looking to take a deeper dive into the intersection of podcasting, law, and journalism, there's some training that's really invaluable. And I want to invite you to visit podcastertraining.com 
for an on-demand legal and business affairs training I've called Podcast Success Blueprint, How to Avoid and Overcome Common Legal and Business Mistakes That Stall Growth and Limit Profit. Whether you're looking to understand copyright laws or navigate contracts or ensure your podcast is compliant with the various legal restrictions or you're doing good journalism, this is a resource designed to empower you with the knowledge you need. So once again, that's called the Podcast Success Blueprint, and you can access it by going to podcastertraining.com. So journalistic podcasts offer big societal value, bridging the gap between traditional journalism and the digital on-demand instant consumption kind of media. These audio platforms provide a unique space for in-depth exploration of topics, uh, fostering a more informed and engaged public. So here are several key ways that podcasts contribute in society. One, they provide an opportunity for deeper dives into complex issues. The extended format can be very valuable. Uh, they are accessible and they are engagement uh, uh, focused. Podcasts make high quality journalism accessible to the audience and it's easier to reach out to the hosts of those shows. The audio format caters to people's on the go lifestyle and it allows listeners to participate and engage in, in uh, uh, consuming the reports uh, while they're commuting and exercising and those kinds of things. Uh, the narrative nature of podcasts makes a more personal connection between host and audience, and that can be really valuable. Um, and it can enhance the impact of the kind of journalism that you're doing. And it fosters public discourse, presenting comprehensive exploration of topics and providing a platform for voices to be heard and perspectives to be aired Journalistic podcasts simulate, stimulate public discourse on critical issues. So lots of opportunity to catalyze social change. Now, I've spent a lot of this episode talking about when you as a podcaster might consider yourself or be considered by others a journalist. But the other side of this is when podcasters shouldn't think of themselves as journalists. Well, if you're doing entertainment, personal story, or opinion-based content, if you're focusing on that, you're probably not going to think of yourself as a journalist. While it's valuable, influential content in its own right, podcasters in, this, in these genres are more accurately described as entertainers or commentators or educators. If you're not doing fact-checking and source verification, producing content without that rigorous reliance on, on um, uh, detail and, and fact-checking, well, then you're probably not doing journalism and shouldn't hold yourself out as such. If you don't prioritize accuracy and reliability of information, you're not adhering to those journalistic principles. So just don't, don't let people think you're a, a journalist. Be transparent about your motivations and your uh, uh, level of investigation. If you're doing advocacy or act as activism without objectivity, well, podcasters who primarily aim to advocate a specific cause or viewpoint without commitment to balanced reporting or objectivity, well, that's not journalism either. And there is such a thing as advocacy journalism, but it requires clear disclosure of the advocacy role and a commitment to truth. So again, transparency is really key. The distinction be be between being a regular or an ordinary podcaster and a journalist really relies on, number one, the content's nature, the, the number two, the creator's intent and their approach to the information and how to share it. And three, that adherence to the ethical standards. Podcasters who see their work as contributing to the public's understanding of important issues with a commitment to the principles of journalism, they can rightfully consider themselves journalists. Conversely, those who are focused on entertainment, personal expression, or advocacy without journalistic rigor are operating in different but still impactful spaces. So as podcasting continues to grow and involve this intersection with journalism will invite us to reconsider over and over again what it means to be a journalist in the digital age. The legal recognitions and challenges and ethical considerations we've been discussing today really only scratch the surface of this dynamic field. And I want to encourage you to join in the conversation. Please share your thoughts, experiences, and questions in the comments and on social media or through email. Your insights do matter and they are very, very welcome. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of Legit Podcast Pro. I am the podcast lawyer, Gordon Firemark, reminding you to stay informed, stay curious, and until next time, keep on podcasting with purpose. See you again soon.